Good morning and welcome back to Gaming with ADHD. Today I wanted to take a quick look at the Shadowrun 6th World Game Master's screen. Now, Game Master screens are probably, outside of dice, I would say the most common accessory that you usually see made for a role-playing game. And uh, there are debates about what's the best kind, how fancy should it get. Um, I personally have printed one off of a 3D printer, uh, but in the past I have also purchased many different ones from for many different games. And uh, I think that the, the one for Shadowrun 6 World is kind of interesting. It has some different features that I figured I would show off and let you all know about. Uh, so you can decide if you want to pick it up for yourself. So, this was released in 2020 and it currently retails for $29.99 US. It comes with a few different things. First off, it does not come with the cards over here on the side. I just have those there uh, so I can show you something here in a couple of minutes. Um, but... Uh, these are this is the uh, rogues gallery that you can purchase I believe for fifteen dollars uh, but I'll get into those a little bit as well so uh, the contents come with the game master screen a rules sheet uh, four double-sided rules references eight double-sided scene inserts and a sticker sheet so let's start going through the content and I'll kind of give you my thoughts as I go along, and then I'll give you some wrap-up thoughts uh, as we get there, okay? So this is your cover that you get with the screen, just kind of a add of what's coming inside. And here is the reference sheet, basically a, uh, a how to use the this particular, uh, this particular, um, Game Master screen, uh, be it the scene inserts, the sticker sheets, uh, the Game Master screen itself. Uh, one of the biggest things is the heat tracker on the outside of the screen. And, and so this will give you instructions on how you're supposed to use it. Now, they do uh, give some, some special instructions down here under runner maintenance. Uh, basically, this is the heat tracker uh, in the screen. And as you can see, it has these sliders that move up and down based on what's happening in the scene or what's happened after the scene. Uh, the instructions sp state that they are trying something different. So obviously there can be some production quirks and so sometimes the sliders might be a little tough to move. And so they recommend, you know, just lightly sanding the, the inside of the track. Or maybe it actually uh, is a little too loose. Maybe it doesn't stay, uh, stay towards the top or, uh, well, I guess it would just stay to the top when it's sitting vertical. Uh, and so they recommend, you know, using a little bit of glue. I haven't quite figured out how I would apply that um, without getting the slider to completely stick. Um, my thoughts would be to use like white glue uh, or Elmer's glue is, you know, I, I grew up calling it. Um, but uh, obviously you'll have to experiment with that if it's an issue on your particular screen. So, uh, let's dive into the screen itself. So, uh, we will start right here since we are on the outside. Basically, you have a heat tracker. You know, how, you know, is security aware of you? Have, have the ha other hackers, you know, found your character in the matrix? You know, uh, do you have bonuses to hide? Do you have penalties? Uh, you know, do you have penalties for the same kind of a thing? Uh, they also track uh, how you relate to the different corporations. Now, by default, they did put the 10 uh, you know, most 
most well-known mega corporations uh, on the heat tracker. So how you relate to those particular uh, organizations. Uh, but they also, and we'll show this off real quick, they also included a sheet of stickers. Now, this includes, uh, you know, popular, you know, nation states, uh, the United Kingdom, Kingdom, Algonquian Manitou, uh, allied German states, Japan, uh, but then also different organizations, Knight Errant, Lone Star, uh, McHugh's, uh, the Evo Corporation, as technology, which, okay, they actually, they, they redid all of the mega corporations as well. Uh, Taco Temple, my personal favorite. Um, and then also the Mafia, Triads, Yakuza, Vori Vizacon, I have no idea what that is, and the Koshari. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess different ethnic gang type organizations. And then also some blank stickers. So you can use those either to place, you know, underneath uh, the different sliders or over top to replace them. Uh, personally, I I don't think that's a bad choice, but I wish they would have done something that's a little bit more reusable. I'm not quite sure how they would have done that. Uh, maybe with like a spot varnish and you could use dry erase there uh, or um, I'm kind of dating myself, but like the vinyl clings uh, that they could use up against the spot varnish. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure, but you know, I think I, I think that's that's a downside to this screen. Uh, but it's not a major downside. You could easily cover these up with post-its, you know, the easily removable. Um, so it it's up to you, but it is what it is. So it opens up, and this is still the outside. Uh, I'm going to slide this over a little bit. So this they call the augmented reality screen, and basically it is designed to take the scene pictures that they give you and actually slide those in. Now, uh, I'll get into the scenes later and I'll kind of show how they work sliding in here, uh, although it will be a little off and you'll understand why when I show you that. The other two panels uh, open up into a large scene of, I'm gonna guess, uh, bug spirits uh, attacking the White House. At least that's what it looks like, uh, but definitely Definitely some some kind of combat happening around the White House. And apparently there is a giant Ares building in DC. For how much longer in Six World? I don't know, but that's a separate issue. And then you also don't want to forget about this. This is another sleeve that I will describe in a minute on how uh, on how that works. But I actually really, really like this feature. So inside, in the middle, you get two screens worth of charts. Now these are kind of a mix of, uh, of general rules. Uh, there's some for pretty much everything. Combat, uh, the matrix, magic, uh, movement, uh, just social tests. Uh, just a, there's a chart down here in the lower right for just the skill levels of, of a test, you know, anywhere from zero to 12. So how many successes do you need to succeed? So, uh, I think they give a good mix of, uh, of just general charts here. Now, one of the key features is actually here on the inside of the screen. Now, all of these are actually cards from the rogues gallery. They can be slid in and out. You know, obviously if they are double-sided, you can put whichever side you want up. They give you four standard card sized slots over here uh, on this panel and one double-sided. So you can use the you know, the weapons or vehicle charts that come with the rogues gallery. 
And then on the other panel, you get six standard card slots. And so again, we've got pictures from the rogues gallery and we have just a, you know, nice mix of just optional things so that you can put all of the different NPCs that you have here. Uh, you can make up your own cards and, uh, and put the, those cards into these slots. Uh, we have standard three by five card. Uh, actually I have one right here. So standard three by five card won't fit, but get a pair of scissors. You can make something that'll fit and that'll work. And so it actually gives, makes the, the screen very, very customizable. So back to this sleeve real quick. So one of the, what it's designed for is you'll take cards from the rogues gallery or from any of the other card sets that they make. And you can put it right here at the top of the screen. So when players are interacting with an NPC, they can see the picture of who they're talking to, the name of the character. Uh, obviously, if you have your own cards, you can put those in there. Um, you know, so you know, or you could you know, put something over top so that you could rename the the particular character. And since the uh, since the rogues gallery also includes stats for uh, for the characters, you can still the the GM can still see what's the name of the character, who are they, what's their background, what are their attributes, uh, any special skills or information that they need, and as you can see, you the GM can see all of that from over top of the screen without losing the information. So he's not having to say, take it and lean it up against the screen while he's reading something or doing something uh, and then having to take it away, move it around while trying to find the information. Um, he can just take it, slide it into the screen and keep it. And obviously if you've got multiple characters, you can fit more than one card, mix it up, you know, whatever's best for your particular situation. So uh, I really, really re like this feature. Uh, obviously, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space on the front of the screen, but doing so would, in my opinion, just kind of neutralize any of the benefit that you get by having it at the top and being able to see the stuff from the back. So that's what you get from the actual screen itself. Now, a couple of things that I really like, um, you know, I like the fact that the charts are a good general mix. I like, you know, uh, detection spells, structure ratings, you know, are the runners going to plant explosives and blow a hole in a wall? You know, what kind of, uh, what kind of rating is the wall that they're going after? Uh, are they trying to conceal something from security after they've been caught? Um, you know, what kind of, you know, what kind of edge can you get for different social tests? Um, I think it's a, it's a really, really good mix of rules for the charts. Um, I, I, I have a couple of issues, like, as you can see, uh, my screen is not sitting completely flat. It is a little bit warped. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just from being open over time as tends to happen with cardboard where it will get moisture in it and warp a little bit. But it's it's not horrible and when it's actually in use, it'll be fine. Uh, I actually store mine in the starter box and it's not an issue. So it, it, it stores pretty well anyways. Uh, I am a little bit worried about these interior sleeves as I was putting in the cards you can feel that they're pushing in underneath this cardboard section here so I do worry that uh, if you're not careful you could end up damaging uh, this section where you put the cards in but I think if you're careful and you're not pushing the cards in too far keep them within the the clear section uh i don't think you'll have to risk much damage at all uh if any uh i do also like i said really like the heat trackers uh i 
like I said previously, I would have preferred like a spot varnish or something that's more easily reusable or changeable, but I think it's a minor quibble. There are plenty of ways that you can you can repurpose that. Okay. So that is the screen itself. Let's take a look at the charts real quick. So you get four charts. You get one for character creation. All of these are double-sided. And the charts, uh, you know, so my, per my personal favorite is character creation. Uh, I have not played a ton of Shadowrun. And so anything that can help me make a new character, I appreciate it. Um, you know, they give the different skills, qualities. Uh, they actually break down character creation step by step and you know, just they give you pretty much everything that you need here and I think it's great. Uh, they've got a combat chart, magic chart, and a matrix and rigging chart. Okay, uh, I do really like that these were kept separate from the GM screen. Obviously, this could have all been fit onto the screen, but uh, if you are a Battletech player as well, you may recall, actually, it's probably about a decade ago now, uh, Catalyst actually put out charts, or like, like separate card charts of the various charts from the different Battletech rulebooks. And... I think this is very similar to that product. I found those really useful for playing games of Battletech. Uh, I think these are just as useful. Uh, I think the character creation chart is very thorough, especially for new players. Now, as far as dislikes on the charts, I, I don't really have any. It's charts. You know, as long as you're getting, uh, if not all the information... Uh, enough information that will help a new player be able to take something and easily reference, easily get into using the particular thing. I think that's just fine. And I think they hit all of those marks with these particular charts. Okay. All right. The last portion of the contents of the screen are these scene inserts. Now, as you can see, these are all very glossy. I actually took these and laminated these almost immediately. Uh, I know I normally try to go through the content first, but I want to point this out. These were printed on extremely thin paper. Um, they, you know, I, I didn't like it at all. Um, the, while the print is just fine, uh, you know, you can, you can see what it is very clearly. Uh, the, the paper, I, I was absolutely terrified of, not terrified, but I mean, I was, I was absolutely worried that I was going to damage the, the pictures. And to me, pictures are going to tell a story. And to me, playing a game is all about the story. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to damage that. So pretty much on opening of the product, uh, I, you know, immediately laminated uh, the pictures so that I wouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, yeah, overall, I really like these. I do think the, the pictures, while there, there is a lot of color and like in this one, it's still pretty bright. Overall, I think all of the, the pictures are pretty dark and, you know, I don't know. I like things a little brighter. Uh, while I realize that, that shadow runs sort of that dystopian future, uh, I don't think it's going to be all horrible. So I would have preferred to have some, some brighter art if I could get it to focus. Sorry about that. I don't know why it went out of focus. There we go. But overall, the artist did some great work on this and absolutely commend their talents. So uh, these, like I said, were designed to go into this section of the screen. 
and unfortunately I did not cut off enough of the laminate but even with the laminate you can see it fits in very easily uh, there's plenty of room for it once I cut them to the right size but that is my fault that is absolutely not a problem with catalyst so do keep that in mind just also remember very 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 thin pictures and so I highly recommend laminating so overall I really like this product I think the the fact that they designed it uh, to work as well as it do does uh, is a you know is a is a credit to catalyst uh, I really like the fact that <clears throat> they designed it for use with their cards you know as you can see with the rogues gallery you've got all these different you know NPCs uh, if you purchased the starter box you've got other cards uh, they've put out more decks they've announced more decks so those those cards are going to be very useful for letting you customize the screen to what you want uh i also really like the the augmented reality screen that they put on the front i like that they made it so that it's not just a static product like pretty much every other gm screen that i have it's it's a nice picture on the screen but that's all it is you know it's yeah, the fact that they made both sides useful while still giving a nice piece of art and also giving the heat trackers, you know, they made, uh, this is the first time personally that I've seen a, a GM screen uh, usable on both sides of the screen. Now, I also finally really like the fact that the charts that they included were included separately and not just plastered across the back of the screen. I think they are useful for everybody. I think they're great for players uh, and GMs alike. And uh, you know, I, I, I wish they would do more of, of them. So if you're a GM, I absolutely recommend this product for the charts, for the organizational options that they provide. Uh, even if you're not the type of GM that hides the dice rolls or your reference info, it's a great product that's going to benefit the group in general. Now, players, unfortunately, this is going to have very limited usefulness for you. Uh, the charts are useful, but I don't think uh, I don't think spending thirty dollars just to get four charts is necessarily worth it. However, players, do your GM a favor. If he hasn't picked this up yet, the group could pitch in a few bucks uh, together. And help him help him out by getting getting him a nice thank you for running the game. So, anyways, thank you for watching. I do appreciate the time that you gave me today. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a like. Uh, and if you know you've got some comments, if there's something that I missed, if there's a, a if there's an issue that you had with your GM screen, please put it in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you about it and love to get more information. Now. I will also have a link in the description uh, for Drive Through RPG. Uh, it's where I get the PDFs for the role playing games that I review on the channel. And so, if you're already purchasing from Drive Through RPG, uh, I'd, I'd I'd love it if you use my referral link so that that way it could help offset some of the costs. So I'll keep doing the reviews regardless. But like I said, I'd appreciate it. So thank you for watching. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you next time.